All right, Mr. Chavez. The cake and muffins come to a total of six crowns, ten shillings. There you are, Mrs. Morgan. And thank you again. Barbara is going to love this. My pleasure. Enjoy. Pardon me, sir. I'm sure Barbara will enjoy them, the cow. Oh, Mr. Fordham, welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. Have you got time for a few more questions, Mrs. Morgan? Yes, of course. What can you tell me about your brother? Ronan was the best brother anyone could have asked for. He took care of me after our parents died. Carriage accident. I was only nine and he was 13. Ronan went out and found work and managed to support the both of us. He was just a child himself, but he kept us out of the gutter. Or worse, the workhouse. How did you hear of his death? Ronan comes by to visit me every day after he finishes work. When he didn't come for two days in a row, I got worried. I went to his apartment, but he wasn't there. So I made a report to the police. Yesterday, they contacted me and asked me to come to the mortuary. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for your loss, Mrs. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. Please, find whoever did this to him. Ronan deserved so much better. What do you know about your brother's murder? Only what the police told me. He was shot at close range outside that pub in the Chum. Nothing was missing, and his wallet had money in it, so they said it wasn't a robbery. I didn't recognize the clothes he was wearing. I had never seen them before, and they were far too big for him. <laughs> I still can't believe he's gone. He was the only family I had left. Dr. Edwards at the mortuary might be able to give us some more detailed information. The only thing we'll get out of this one is more tears. What sort of life did Ronan lead? You know, just normal. He'd go to work, come visit me afterwards, and go home. He didn't have much of a social life. At least he never mentioned any friends to me. I always hoped Ronan would meet a nice girl to settle down with but he was so shy, you know. Where did Ronan work? At the Grips Home Taxidermy Shop in Gascone. I always thought it was rather macabre work, but he enjoyed it. Bit lonely, though. Can you give me the address of Ronan's apartment? It's at 1172 Bushmill Street. I have a spare key. That would be most helpful. Thank you. So, this is your bakery. My husband, Gerald, and I have had it for almost ten years. Is it just the two of you? Do you have any children? Alas, no. Some extra hands would be most welcome in the kitchen, but we haven't yet been blessed. It's such a shame that Ronan never got to be an uncle. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the outcome of the election? Oh, I haven't given it much thought, to be honest. It hardly seems to matter now. Uh, yes, of course. My apologies for bringing it up. Those are all the questions I have for now. All right, Mr. Fordham. Quite the collection of exotic items in here. Ronan appears to be a seasoned world traveler. Or at least knows someone who is. This one is scarier than the other masks. Wait a moment, I think I saw something shiny in the back of the mouth. How about that? A perfect hiding place for a key. Now to find out what Mr. Lespay finds so precious. Looks like you found Ronan's journal. Perhaps this will be able to give us some more insight into what he was up to before he died. A model of the SS Jundalup. Looks like a merchant vessel to me. They appear to be a pair of letters from Ronan's landlord. This one appears to be from Emily. It's empty. Too bad. Aha! Uh -huh. A letter from someone called Jimbo?
Let's see. June 17th, 1843. Someone brought in a rare big-eared hopping mouse from Australia yesterday. Stuffing it was quite a challenge as the organs were difficult to remove without damaging the body. Hmm. I think I'd rather not read about Ronan's taxidermy process any further. Hmm. There are two entries, one from this year and one from last. So, start with last year's. July 8th, 1843. I've decided I need to get out more, so I'm going to a club in Gascon tonight. Stuffing animals has taken its toll, and I need to talk to someone who isn't Emily or my co-workers. Gerald told me about a place called the Crimson Cat. I'll try it, and if I don't enjoy myself, I'll just come home. Now for this year's entry. July 8th, 1844. Today is our one-year anniversary. We're going to meet at the cat again. I love him, but I wish he wasn't so attached to that place. Emily is so nosy, I worry that she might follow me and discover the truth about Jimbo. If we moved around, I wouldn't worry, but with him, it's always the Crimson Cat. I really shouldn't complain, though. What we have is something truly special. Well, it seems that our best hope of finding this Jimbo character is to visit the Crimson Cat. Ronan's book collection mostly consists of cheap pulp adventure novels, but this top shelf looks interesting. No title, and it appears to be blank. I wonder if Ronan just kept empty books on his shelf to appear well read. It's in another language, but it appears to be a Bible. I had an illustration that looked similar to that one. I wonder where it ended up. I guess Ronan won't be realizing his world travel dreams now. Death really has a way of messing up your plans. Ronan wasn't too concerned with comfort, apparently. This is hardly bigger than a bunk at sea. Hello, and welcome to the Gripsome Taxidermy Shop. Please let me know if I can be of service. I was wondering if you might answer some questions for me. Of course. What can I help you with? I was told Ronan Lespay works here. Do you know him? Ronan? Yes, of course. That is to say, I know he works here. I haven't had much interaction with him. He mostly keeps to himself. Does he have an office or workspace I might have a look at? Now wait just a minute. Why would I let some random stranger off the street in to look at an employee's workspace? Because I'm a private investigator and I'm trying to get some information. Well, even if that is the case, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Ronan does have a workspace, but it's completely bare. He doesn't keep anything here. Were you aware that Ronan was murdered four nights ago? I... I had no idea. That's awful. What happened? That's what I'm currently trying to find out. Do you know if Ronan had any enemies? Anyone who might want to do him harm? No. As I said, I didn't speak with him much or know much about him. But now that I think about it, I did notice a strange man waiting around outside the shop a few days ago. Tell me about this strange man you saw. At the time, I didn't think much of him. But the more I recall, the more I realized he was being very suspicious. What did he do? He just stood outside across the street, but he seemed to be focusing on the building. It was as though he was waiting for someone. Do you remember what this man looked like? I didn't get a very good look at him, but I do remember some things. He was tall and had a heavy build, like a boxer or a dock worker. He had a beard, I think, or mutton chops at the very least. And as far as I can recall, he was wearing all black. He also had on some kind of cap. I'm sorry I can't give you a better description, but that's all I was able to distinguish. My eyesight isn't very good, I'm afraid. It'll have to do. Thank you for your help. Anything you can tell me about the shop? Plenty! This is New Britannia's most sophisticated taxidermy shop. Unlike other taxidermists, we work with modern technology to get results they could only dream of. 
what does that mean exactly? Using steam tech, we are able to create the illusion of life in these beasts. Just take a look at our floor samples. The parrot and gorilla are two of our finest works. They really speak for themselves. Well, the parrot does at least. I think it would frighten our customers if the gorilla did too. <laughs> and once ethericity is harnessed as a viable source of energy, we'll get even better results. This guy is way too excited about bringing dead things back to life. Hmm, yes, fascinating. Moving on. So how did you get this job? Oh, it isn't a terribly exciting story, I'm afraid. I just saw an ad in the Gazette for a clerk position. I never expected to learn so much about taxidermy. I'm sure he's amazing conversation at parties. Any thoughts on the recent election? I'd really rather not talk about it. I don't know how the people of this country could put someone like Hart Leroy in charge. It's obviously because he holds the interests of the common man above all else. So, you're just like all the other cowards who think steam tech is dangerous. Well, I hope you like the idea of living in the Dark Ages, because that's where Leroy is going to take us. Perhaps it's best if we drop the subject entirely. Thank you for your help. I'm here to serve. I wonder how many people it took to bring down this brute. There's a small button on the base. Reminds me of the one in the Dupre house, except that one actually looked alive. There's a small button on the base. think in an instant, a man's life can be reduced to some scribbles on the filthy pavement. Now's not the time to get poetic, Bill. What a mess. The yesterday's rain has made the water level rise significantly. Is it just me, or does it look like there's something resting at the bottom of the drain? If there is, I have no way of getting to it through the drain cover. Securely fastened, unfortunately for you. If only there was some way to undo these bolts and remove the drain cover. My, this grog shop looks pretty rough, even by chum standards. Let's keep a low profile while you're in here, Miles. Excuse me, barmaid? Hi, what do you need? You know a man named Ronan Lespay? Nah, never heard of him. He was killed here four nights ago. The man in this ferrotype. Oh, that one. Well, I never saw him before that night. I didn't talk to him. You with the police or something? No, not at all. I'm just trying to help his sister find out what happened. So are you done with the questions? Can I get you a drink or what? Yeah, she's a shrewd businesswoman. You at least have to give her that. Were you working on election night? Pal, I'm here most every night. So that's a yes, then? Christ on a cracker, you ain't too bright, are you? Yes, I was here on election night. There's no need to be rude about it, madam. Tell me what you know about the murder that took place outside on election night. Listen, chum, do you know how busy we were that night? This was a polling place. We had gents coming in and out for hours. Not to mention the regular clientele. I was up to my ass in drink orders and was running the shift all by myself. Had to break up God knows how many fights, too. So you'll excuse me if I didn't exactly notice something that happened out on the street. Did you at least hear the gunshot? No, I didn't. You try distinguishing a gunshot over a room full of rowdy voters. It ain't gonna happen. What can you tell me about this place? It's a bar. People come here to drink. Sometimes people drink too much, and then they're sick all over. I get the honor of cleaning up the mess. Sounds like you're not too pleased with your job. I never said that. There may be rough days, but there's a lot worse I could be doing. Here I get a place to sleep and a bit to eat and a few coins in my pocket if the customers are pleased. And you are pleased, ain't you, sir? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I am. Good. You mentioned regular clientele. Who are they? Oh, we get plenty of regulars in here. Too many to name. 
Which of them were here on election night? Hmm. Let me think. I remember seeing three of the usual crowd. There was Darius, up to no good as always. Then there was Singin' Tom, but he wasn't around for too long. And how could I forget old Cormac? He'd have talked my ear off if I'd let him. Sound like an interesting bunch of folks. Where might I find the landlord? You won't find him anywhere. He doesn't come around here more than once a month. What can you tell me about Darius? Hey now, bucko. You've come in here asking me all these questions, but I ain't seen nothing from you. You want more information? You're gonna have to earn it. Right. Give me a gin, then. Coming right up. Don't get carried away now, Miles. There you are. One gin. That'll be two shillings. There's three. Now then, about Darius. Now that man is trouble. I've had to throw him out a few times. Why do you say he's trouble? His mind's affected by the poppy seed. He can be gentle as a kitten or fly into a rage at a moment's notice. When he gets rowdy, he gets chucked. I see. Any idea where I might be able to find him? Don't know why you'd want to find him. But I hear he spends his day at a smokehouse nearby. I believe it's on Crisparkle Lane. Just look for the door with the oriental symbols above it. And could you describe him to me? He's a rough-looking sort, about 55 years old, has a scar on his left cheek, grayish hair, medium build. Excellent. Thank you. Who is Singing Tom? Ah, Tom. Not sure what his surname is, but he's in here about twice a week. We call him Singing Tom because he leads the church choir. Is that right? Which church? Oh, I haven't a clue. Never really cared to ask. Does he associate with any of the other regulars? I've seen him talking with Darius a few times. They seem to be on friendly terms. Tell me about Cormac. He's in here most every night. Doesn't speak to many people, just me. And a right chatterbox he is, too. Between you and me, Cormac stinks. I can understand why he doesn't keep much company. He stinks? Aye, he's a sewer worker. Spends all his day underground in the muck, so he always reeks of shit. I see. Any idea of where specifically he works? I believe he's at the treatment station, over near the ferry terminal. If this is going where I think it is, then I'm especially glad I can't smell anything anymore. Have you worked here long? Thirteen years. I see. Anything else you can tell me about yourself? I ain't the friendly type. Right. Understood. I was given the physical description of a man, and I was wondering if you might recognize him if I told you. Perhaps. Go on, then. He's tall, strong build, with a beard or mutton chops, dressing all in black and possibly wearing a cap. Hmm. Bit vague, wouldn't you say? That covers about half our clientele. I was afraid that might be the case. Did you notice anyone of that description here on election night? Hmm, no. Can't say I did, sorry. Any thoughts on the election? Nah, couldn't care less, really. Doesn't matter who's in charge, my life ain't getting any better. Surely it'll get better with Leroy in office. We'll see. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Yeah, yeah. This is what it's come to, eh? Braving the stench of human waste in hopes of finding a lead? Just make sure you stay away from the edge. Handy to know where you are. But why would anyone actually travel around the city this way? Some sort of water treatment device would be my guess. For all I know, it could just be a fancy boiler for tea. Begging your pardon, sir. What? Who are you? What are you doing down here? My name's Miles Fordham, and I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a sewer worker by the name of Cormac. We needn't look no further. But what is this about? I just have a few questions for you. All right. Cormac will answer them. But don't dally for too long. It can be dangerous down here for anyone who's not trained as Cormac is. 
You know a man named Ronan Lespay? Cormac knows few men. People don't much like talking to a man who spends his days in his sewers. Can't really blame him for it. It's hard to get a stink off, so why bother even trying? You didn't answer my question, though. Do you know Ronan Lespay or not? Could you describe him? Cormac's got a better memory for faces than for names. I have his portrait. Here, have a look. Ah, yes. Cormac saw this fellow recently. On election night? That's right. He come into the bar, voted, went out. Looked drunk to Cormac, but then everyone at that place usually is. Do you frequent a pub called the Silent Raven? Ah, uh, yes. The Raven is where Cormac goes to forget about the day's work. The barmaid, Nicole, she's a good sort. We like talking about the ponies down at the track. Nikki loves us some racing. She gives Cormac drinks for cheap in exchange for odd jobs. Nice to have your own personal sewer man, I suppose. She's really the only one Cormac talks to. There's a few others Cormac sees often, but Cormac hasn't spoken with him. Ripes. This guy goes on and on, doesn't he? To be fair, you were warned. Do you know anything about the murder that took place outside the Silent Raven on election night? Murder? Ah, yes. The commotion out in the alleyway. That's right. Did you see or hear anything? It was a touch noisy that night, what with all the election stuff happening. But Cormac remembers the sound of the gun. One shot. And then shouting and hollering from the bar. A few people run outside to look at what happened. But Cormac just stayed in his seat and finished his whiskey. So you didn't see the man who was shot? Or who shot him? Nah, no, keeps to himself, Cormac does. Makes life easier that way. Could he be any more unhelpful? Actually, it's probably best not to find him. Is it difficult being a sewer worker? Difficult? Nah, it's a dream. Especially since they introduced all these steam tech treatments and purification watsits. The only thing Cormac's got to do is check the little dial never goes into the red on old Belinda. Belinda? Aye, the purifier. She's a real special lady who's made Cormac's life so much brighter. Cormac makes sure to thank her each and every day. Wonderful. We're talking to a lunatic. Wasn't so easy a few years ago. Back then it was tapping on pipes all day. Tapping on pipes? To make sure they was flowing fine and not blocked. Cormac would take his little hammer and tap, tap, tap on the pipes to make sure they was ringing fine. You can imagine what that was like. Tap, tap, tap. Ring, ring, ring. All day, up and down, over and over. The tapping stopped, but the ringing never left. Still hears it to this day, Cormac does. Do you have any opinions regarding the election? Cormac hears lots of things about Atwood, but he's the one what's got this new machinery put into the sewer system. It's still a job for Cormac, so all they talk about being replaced by machines is just talk, for now. But Leroy says he wants to give the workers their fair chance, so Cormac can't argue with that. What about you? I think Leroy will be a good Prime Minister. Bah! They's all the same in the end. One way or another. No point worrying, says old Cormac. Would you be able to remove the cover of a storm drain? Yes, of course, sir. Cormac's got the right tool for the job. Just a few twists from old Mary here, and any drain will open up like a Christmas rose. Excellent. Would you be able to open the storm drain outside the Silent Raven? Suppose so, yes. But Cormac ain't allowed to just open up drains as he sees fit. What do you want this drain open for? I believe there's a vital piece of evidence at the bottom of the drain. You don't say. It's quite true. It may even help me solve a murder. Well then, in that case, Cormac will get the drain open for you. Come on, there's not a moment to lose. This it then? That's the one. Right, won't be a moment. There we are. Thank you for your help, Cormac. Not a problem. Now, if you don't mind, Cormac's just going to pop inside for a quick pint.
Detective work is a dirty job, but someone has to do it. Don't forget to roll up your sleeve. I really hope there's something down there. Ugh. This is almost as bad as the time I had to search for that stolen necklace in a pile of horse manure. I'm really glad I didn't draw the short straw in that case. Well, how about that? A shame the police managed to overlook this. Moment of your time, if I may. Right, but make it quick. I wonder if you could tell me if you saw a man of this description at the Silent Raven on election night. He's tall, strong build, with a beard or mutton chops, dressing all in black and possibly wearing a cap. Oh, hi. Cormac remembers seeing a fella like that. What was he doing? Kept going in and out of the bar. When he was inside, he stood near the voting booths, hardly moving a muscle. And when he was outside? That, Cormac couldn't say. Did you notice anything else about him? Yes. Cormac noticed him come in and speak with Nicole, the barmaid, after the commotion outside. Is that right? That's very interesting. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. Excuse me, barmaid? Hi, what do you need? You know that description I gave you earlier? Of the tall man in black? Yeah, what about it? I spoke with Cormac, and he told me he saw you speaking with someone fitting that description shortly after the murder occurred. And you believed him? Cormac's a good sort, but he's not exactly reliable. I'd say he's twice as reliable as you are. Now tell me the truth, or I'll have you in as an accomplice to murder. All right, all right, relax. I don't know the man by name, but he came to me after the commotion outside and paid me a few crowns to keep my mouth shut about it. I didn't ask any more questions, and I wasn't about to refuse some extra cash. That was that, I swear. That's not good enough. I need some way to find this man. Is there anything else you can tell me? Well, I did notice he had a scar on his left cheek. Kind of looked like a shepherd's crook. But that's all, really. I suppose that'll have to do. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Yeah, yeah. 